Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We're built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha Conquer Outdoors. So it's a little bit late in the season, but um, I've wanted to get out with John Arkwright and Jim Brogan and go fishing with these guys. And the only way for us to do that is to uh, use a side-by-side -side like the Defender XTP, which we just got recently. We want to put some miles on, we fully strap the boat to the roof of it and go find ourselves some remote lakes and see what we can find fishing-wise. So we showed up at the camp really early in the morning. We started to unload our gear and you know, get everything ready, get everything prepped. And the weather had definitely showed up as well. I mean, we were expecting to do this trip a few weeks prior when the weather was a little warmer. For this day, it was gonna be some snow, um, some significantly cold weather. The funny thing was, is as we're standing around figuring this out and, and looking at what to do and unloading, uh, we realized that John still hadn't even showed up. So when John finally arrived, um, he brought with you an extended roof rack for out your two inch hitch receiver that will hold a boat up in the air. It was great. The only problem was it was designed for a slightly shorter side by side. So we did have to take the tailgate off. Loaded everything up and we were ready to go out and find out where this fishing hole was. we just, you know, cruised down the road. Everything was fine, nice and open. And they had told me, oh, the trail gets pretty tricky, pretty technical, not sure if you're gonna be able to make it out there. We got off the, the main road and, and got onto a tighter trail. And the special uh, rack for the, uh, for the boat stuck out just a little bit extra on either side. Driving an ATV or UTV with a boat or a canoe on top is a whole different ball game. It raises your center of gravity. When you tilt going through things, you need a lot more space between the trees to, to get through than you do without. So it's, it's a whole different uh, thing running with something on top. If I was going to do a lot of backcountry fishing where you can't really pull a trailer, and that's important to know, can you pull a trailer in? No, you can't. Guess what? This Defender, wow, it just blew me away today. And I, I'll tell you what, I can't say enough about how well that piece of equipment worked today. So after the um, really easy kind of break-in trail, started to narrow up a bit, a little more debris on the trail because the guys hadn't been out there. I mean, really, they haven't even been out to, to clean up for hunting season yet. Um, they've been so busy with all kinds of different things. And we come to this one down tree, and so we got to clear a tree up. After that, we're right next to this beautiful waterfall. I tell you, to get into a fishing spot, you can call it remote because uh, it's tight out here. But the Defender XTP, I'm definitely impressed with the, uh, the diff lock on it. The smart lock is working good. We're getting places that I don't think John thought we ever would. Jim's got some confidence in me, but uh, John's just back there laughing every time we make it through somewhere. So doing what it's supposed to, but it's tight. It's not tall enough. We're not parabolical the hypotenuse. There we go. Till the next tree comes. Think of that much weight you could have got. And as we're we're climbing up this, I mean this huge hill, and it it opens up, and there's a you know, a, a sizable pond. Just gotta step back and go, hey, it's not always just about the ride getting there. Sometimes it's the, the, the places along the way. You just gotta stop and realize just how beautiful, you know, things in this world are. Got through the water and uh, found ourselves the, uh, the place we were gonna pull the boat off.
the initial lead in to this, to this adventure was, I've always been trying to get AJ to come up and learn how to fly fish with Jim. Well, the wind was about 400 miles an hour, so that kind of shut down the fly fishing process. And I said, you guys go out, go for 15, 20 minutes, tour around the lake, see where it's good, and then, then we'll jump in, we'll come out with you, and, uh, and we'll, we'll do this fishing thing. Um, yeah, didn't work out that way. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. AJ approached us about doing a late season bass fish, like that's something that Jim and I have never done. You know, usually come around September, we've the rods are the least of our interest and it's time to focus on hunting. Jim and I get down there and of course we get into the bantering that we usually do and yammering back and forth each other and uh... I have the biggest. I have the biggest. You need any tips or pointers on how to catch fish or oh we've been friends for gotta be 45 years, I think. And uh We've had the odd time where we get mad at each other, but uh, we always make it up. And there's always good nature dribbling and back and forth. And I think we were only supposed to go for like a half an hour. And I said to Jim, I said, do you think we should go back and see AJ? Yeah, we just got to get another fish or two and then we'll go back and another fish or two, another fish or two, another fish or two. And then we should go pick him up. I think so. So we started off fishing close to shore, didn't get anything and moved uh, into mid depths and started hitting a few. And then we went deep and actually did really well there at the end, so. They're pretty though, eh? Yeah. You're fairly chunky right now though, aren't they, eh? Yeah, they're beefing up for winter. Little unusual for us to be out in this weather. Like five minutes, you'd be out in the sun, and five minutes later, you'd be in the snow, and the wind was just horrible all day. Things sure have slowed down, and it's just turning into a downright nasty day. Like I said, I can't say enough. This was a fun day, and we would like to got AJ out fishing a little bit more, but boy, it was just dirty weather, and it was hard controlling the boat, and uh, we'll just have to take him back out again on a on a better day when he can catch a six pounder. We finally made it back to, to the landing to pick up AJ and uh, I felt kind of bad about that, but not, not all that bad about it, but. So no less than two hours later, John and Jim decide to show back up at shore. Hey, when, uh, when you guys left and you said that you were gonna come back and pick me up, that boat over there was brand new, eh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you kind of forgot to come back. I forward. said not to come back until we got a six pounder. Yeah, well, until you found the six pounders. I was oh, hoping maybe just I, wanna... You know what? If I had to come out with you guys, though, I would have got one, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Jim and I have been fishing for 40 years, and uh, we, we've had so much fun fishing. We've seen so much fishing. We've been so many places fishing that that's what makes your life remember, uh, memorable. You know, you can, our wives say, oh, here comes story number 23. Yeah. Usually there's been a few cocktails involved before the stories start, but it's nice to have those stories. The temperature dropped. We all noticed right away, man, it's getting cold and it's getting cold quick. So if we want to get this thing back and, and get ourselves the heck out of here, um, and good thing we did because it started to snow and, and it did set in for sure. This Defender really, really impressed me today. I can't say enough about it. For a thousand cc bike it just you know i think what you have to do is you have to understand what your your atv or your side by side is capable of and if you understand that you'll go just about anywhere it's a big wide bike but it's amazing the tight spots that we put it through for its size it's got an amazing turning radius the diff lock on it worked flawlessly like we hardly spun a tire in some really nasty conditions It was a little tight and narrow and very technical in places and very gnarly and rocky, which is what our camp is. It's just hills and rock, and it's a real test 
for any equipment up in here. I had a great time. Got to show these guys a new side-by-side, -side, show them it'll do something that I don't think they think it would. And at the end of the day, have fun with two great people and uh, great equipment that took us places we didn't think possible. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. A few weeks ago, I started into an easy to do DIY rock crawler transformation for our Polaris Razor RS1. We added protection, put on a serious winch, and all around increased the rugged rock bashing capabilities of the RS1. This week, we continue with the rock crawling theme. In anticipation of a few different parts I'll be putting on, I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the RS1, put it on jack stands, and then go ahead and take off the wheels and tires. This is gonna give us much better visuals for you guys to see what I'm doing. And truth be told, I'm not gonna be reusing these anyways. With the stock tires and wheels out, we have a clear view of the suspension. Big, beefy, and incredibly exposed, both front and rear. The answer to this, skid plates. In the world of skid plates, you have many different options. Aluminum, steel, or the newest Rage UHMW or HMW, which stands for high molecular weight or ultra high molecular weight. Or in simple terms, <laughs> really hard to puncture plastic. The trailing arms on any sport side-by-side -side or single-seater like the RS1 are really exposed, and they're in the perfect spot to take a beating. So pretty much, this is where I'm gonna start. Factory UTV, Trail Armor, or Ricochet all make different styles and designs, but for me, I'm just looking to cover the actual trailing arm, not the entire underside of the RS1. The Polaris brand guards are simple and easy to install and provide good coverage on three sides of the steel arm. The plate is quarter inch thick, HMW, and one added feature of this material over steel or aluminum is that it actually slides over what it contacts, so you have a better chance of continuing your forward momentum as opposed to aluminum, steel, or the stock unprotected trailing arm. Sure, it looks simple, but simple doesn't mean it ain't right. Continuing on in the same manner, we'll be protecting the lower front A-arm with a similarly designed skid plate that's made out of the same material. Truthfully, all the same attributes go along with these front A-arm guards, but I'd say they're even more important as the A-arms truly are the first line of impact in most situations, and the tube steel nature makes them much more prone to damage than a beefy trailing arm out back. These HMW guards offer a tall front flap that adds protection for the CV boots when sticks and debris try to get in there. Mounting is quick, just like the rears, and these are designed to slide over anything that you come in contact with. So for this next step, I may cause a little bit of a stir. For this crawler build, I didn't go with 32s, I didn't go with 30s, I didn't even go with stock 29s. I chose a 28, and I'll tell you why. I know, I know, we always go bigger with tires, but one thing I notice is folks going huge with tires and not addressing the ability for the engine and driveline to be able to handle them. Going with the Pro Armor Crawler XG 28 inch with an eight ply sidewall and a super sticky rubber compound, not to mention a square setup at 10 inches wide on all four tires, is gonna mean that in low gear, we'll have a huge ability to spin the tires in even the most aggressive conditions. The one inch smaller tire only equates to half an inch less ground clearance, so I'm not concerned. We went with the Pro Armor Halo Beadlock Rim in this instance as well. It puts up a 1,600 pound load limit per rim and the beadlock is wide and thick to protect the sidewall. While there are a lot of comparable rim designs from ITP and similar companies, this 28 inch tire on the Halo 15 inch rim is a combo that's not as easy to find. And I believe the 15 inch rim not only looks great, but pulls together the black on black scheme with all of our parts. Now the final two pieces to this build, I'm continually raving about and I don't care who makes them. In my opinion, when you're out on the trail, they're must haves. Up first, a roof. Today I'm installing a Polaris brand aluminum roof, but other manufacturers offer plastic as well. I like the aluminum because it's sturdier, it's light, and it integrates a built-in sunshade to the front rolled lip. It's a one piece design to cover the entire roof section and is sealed all the way around the entire roll cage to keep water out and vibrations eliminated. The 5051 aluminum is strong, and in case you do get yourself in a really bad situation, it'll protect against intrusion to a greater degree than just a basic plastic roof. Working in harmony with the roof is obviously a windshield. Now, a full windshield in the fall and early spring can be a really nice setup, but I prefer the one-third size. In this case, they call it a half windshield. The unique benefits of the Polaris brand is its lock and ride. It's self-seating, and it features a significant forward-facing lip on the top portion of the poly that's designed to grab junk flying at you, I like the short shield for this build as I don't want to have any reflections or issues sighting forward lines when crawling. And should I need to remove it at any time, it's small enough that I can tuck it away behind the seat or strap it on out back. 
I've put a lot of accessories and upgrades on the RS1, but all of them are functional and important in their own unique way. Stay tuned to a future episode where I'll finish up the build and then I'm gonna go out and hit the rocks and see if I've accomplished what I set out to do. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo. Go anywhere. Just whisper the name Argo to any corn-fed outdoorsman and his eyes will glaze over like you waved a magic wand. Clearly, Argos are the ultimate hardcore hunting and fishing off-road conveyance. In as much as the Aurora is all new to the untrained eye, it may appear similar to archetypical 30 plus year old Argos still in production. By the way, those original Argos are still selling like hotcakes. In fact, Argo sells every XTV they build every year. Ontario Drive and Gear keeps their production lines running full tilt to meet demand for these unusual, somewhat misunderstood, extreme terrain vehicles. So, you're asking yourself, why would Argo change their much-loved XTV if they can't build enough to meet demand? That, my friends, is the question we're going to answer for you during this test ride. Every piece of the new modular and completely restyled plastic bodywork used to build an Argo XTV has been improved and updated on the Aurora. The new bodywork can be easily replaced in sections and the look is exceptionally appealing. Two major ergonomic improvements result from moving the firewall forward giving front seat occupants more leg room. The new firewall is now insulated, isolating front seat occupants from engine and exhaust heat, while the exhaust note is significantly subdued by a new design silencer. Equally important is the shifting of the handlebars and steering post to a conventional location at the left front of the cockpit. These changes make the Aurora more functionally comparable to a side-by-side -side vehicle, thus taking Argo closer to the mainstream side-by-side -side business. The most remarkable improvement the Aurora brings to the ubiquitous extreme terrain vehicle is Argo's new progressive steering system. If you've driven an Argo, you've probably noticed it steers more like a D9 bulldozer than a side-by-side. -side. The new APS steering system allows the driver to take advantage of the new 40 mile per hour top speed the Aurora's optional 950cc V-twin 40 horsepower mill delivers. The base 800 used in this test has tons of power. Traditional Argos require a segmented approach to high-speed corners, which can be unnerving and jerky. APS creates a linear and measured response to steering inputs. A significant improvement in ride quality comes from the Aurora's new tires. They have an additional traction element, or chevron, which noticeably smooths the ride on hard surfaces and improves the tire's ability to propel the Argo when going amphibious. Of course, the most unusual and notable feature of any Argo XTV is its ability to propel itself through water. Argo claims their XTVs can travel at speeds up to two miles per hour. While that's not pulse-pounding velocity by any stretch of the imagination, you can supplement the Aurora's on-water performance using an available outboard engine bracket and achieve significantly higher on-water speeds. The Aurora handles the weight of a small outboard perfectly and the new forward-facing rear seating arrangement plays well to comfortable and stable on-water navigation. A lingering issue with past Argos has been fit and finish, particularly in the cockpit area. The new Aurora has a smooth one-piece floor from front to back that not only looks great, but is exceptionally grippy. The new top-mounted shifter is buttery smooth in its action and very side-by-side-ish in its feel. The gauge cluster and handlebar switch gear are all new, allowing for starting gear operation with the brake applied. The new finger pull throttle is a huge improvement over the original motorcycle twist grip. This new throttle produces response from the engine that's completely linear and predictable, making high-speed running not just safe, but exhilarating. Okay, maybe the word exhilarating is a little over the top. It's time for me to tell you where the new Aurora is taking Argo. In our opinion, the Aurora puts Argo legitimately in the side-by-side -side business. For sure, the Aurora does not have any conventional mechanical suspension system. Strangely, Argos deliver an acceptable ride using only the eight tires and their spongy sidewalls to absorb impacts. The Aurora goes one better with a new molded seat base. APS also produces a tangible improvement in Aurora ride quality. 
Because steering inputs are now completely linear and smooth, Aurora riders are not thrown around in the seats. However, you'll have to try one for yourself to understand how mainstream the Aurora's ride, handling, and control operation has become. You may discover, like we did, Argo is now a legitimate player in the side-by-side -side business. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Textron Off-Road, power, performance, and precision engineering. Make sure you click to subscribe for even more great content on our YouTube channel. Travel stories, test rides, modifications, you name it, we've got it.